Well, good morning. Man, I am so glad to see you today at Broadway Baptist Church. Welcome on this uh, great Sunday morning. Is it a great Sunday morning? Okay, some of you sound like it's a fair to Midland Sunday morning. You know, is it a great Sunday morning to be in the Lord's house? All right, we're warming up a little bit. It is uh, uh, amazing to be able to be here today, first day of the week, celebrating the Lord and His glorious resurrection. Man, I tell you, it is always uh, a pleasure and a joy to get up. It's, it's. I tell you what, man, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna lie to you. On uh, this particular Sunday morning, I, I have uh, almost from the minute that I went to bed last night to when I woke up this morning felt just this. Just the, the presence of, of, of the enemy trying to really, really derail what, uh, what I know God's got for us over the next few weeks. And uh, uh, it, it actually started back a few days ago when I started studying for this morning and the next few weeks in earnest as we turn our attention toward revival. And I know the last thing the enemy wants us to have is a revival in our hearts. Do you believe that? And so uh, it is no surprise that the enemy's been fighting really hard. And uh, so I know that as we come together today, that greater is he that is in me and you than he that is in the world. So we have uh, the power of Jesus Christ on our side today, and he is going to give us the ability to overcome. Do you believe that today? And I believe that he's going to give us the opportunity to really, really begin to get revived and to get the beginning stages of revival going. We need it. I know I need it. And uh, I I believe that we are ripe for it. But I also believe the enemy wants to snatch it away. So uh, let's just not let that happen today, okay? And so uh, let's go to the Lord as we begin our service this morning. We welcome you to the sanctuary, welcome our live streamers as uh, you visit with us or join us virtually today, and uh, we're so incredibly thankful to be able to be in the Lord's presence in His sanctuary on this Sunday morning. Father, we love you, we thank you so much for your love for us, for your power, for your glory, for your grace, thank you so much for just being here today in this sanctuary. Lord, we welcome your presence because, Lord, we we know we've experienced we um, we certainly um, uh, feel sometimes just the oppression that is that is uh, all over our world and and uh, just at every turn and fathers we come in today we don't want to feel that oppression we want to feel a freedom and a liberty in you and in your Holy Spirit and in allowing your Holy Spirit to speak to us, to work through us, to um, lead us to what real worship is as we gather together today. And Lord, as we sing these songs, I pray that we would not just sing them, but believe them and let them be our anthems today as we look and remember how great you are. Lord, just uh, take this service and and, uh, make it be exactly what you need it to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together this morning and sing together. Great is the Lord, because he is great this morning. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord, he is holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, He is faithful and true. By His mercy He proves He is love. Sing it out now. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord. Love. 
love. Great is the Lord, He is faithful and true, by His mercy He proves He is love. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of glory. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of praise. Great are you, Lord, I lift up my voice, I lift up my voice. How majestic is your name in all the earth. Let's sing it out this morning. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Oh, Lord, we magnify your name. Prince of peace, mighty God. Oh, Lord, I tell you, God is great this morning, and let's just sing it out. How great is our God. Just the simple chorus. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. Sing it again. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. Thank you so much. You may be seated this morning. How can I keep from singing your name? Your love. 
private key, and it makes my heart want to sing. I can sing in the troubled times, sing when I win. I can sing when I lose my step and fall down again. I can sing because you pick me up. And you know, today, there is just something, well, there's absolutely nothing like the name of Jesus. Wouldn't you agree with me about that? So let's just worship with our one of our favorites. There's something about that name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 there's just something. most definitely wonderful today, isn't it? His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful.
art worthy. Our Lord is worthy of all of our praise and all of our glory and all of our honor. Thou art worthy. As we sing, How Great Thou Art. Oh 
and praise you because you are worthy. You are great. You are holy and you are powerful. You are wonderful. And Lord, someday, because of your son, Jesus, we will see you face to face. Thank you, Lord, for your great salvation. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you would do the great thing and send Jesus to die on the cross for us. Thank you that we're able to worship you and lift you up today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated this morning. It's time. over here you can see now we have Joe and Flo and Joe and Flo they were just best of friends they would, they would go and they grew up together they were in the same class as during, during school time they were on the same soccer team they did everything together they were best friends well as let me put actually let me put Joe in first, then Flo. Remember their names because the, uh, the black markers are already coming off of them. So you have Joe and Flo, and they hung out, and they loved hanging out with each other. But then, you know, one day, Flo, she was invited to church. So she went, she came, and we get Flo out of here. We're going to put her into church. Now, she went to church now we got some salt here you know the bible says that we are to be salt of the earth so as she was in church she was in sunday school she was there in children's church she started going and she started hearing about the things of god she started going and hear about how much god loves her and how though and you know how much even though her parents and her family and joe loved her how jesus loved her even more and so she started going and just learning more and things about for his god and and it wasn't too long that she knew that she needed Jesus Christ. And so she went and, as you might not be able to tell, the egg, Flo, was down here at the bottom. But now Flo has risen to the top of the glass. And I don't know if y'all can see that with all the, with the, uh, as far as the, the salt in the water. But she realized, you know what, I don't have to be down in the dumps, I don't have to be down. The pressures of the world and everything it keeps me down. With Jesus Christ, it lifted her up. She was going. She went and accepted Christ as her Savior. And because we needed to go and be the salt of the earth, what do you think, Taya? What do you think she? What, what, what do you think Flo should do to Joe? Invite, invite him to church. That's exactly right. Because she has something that new now. She went. She was saved. And she wanted to go and tell others. She wanted to go and be able to go and just for, for share, share Jesus with Joe. So this is exactly what she did. She went and she got Joe. Instead of Joe being down and with the pressures of the world and things down, now Joe, he went to church and he got saved. And now they're both on top of the world. Because even though... The things of the far, the thing, even though the pressures, even though Satan tries to go and the things of this world can kind of push us down to try to go and get us down, when we have Jesus Christ, there's anything that could get us, there's nothing that could get us too down. Because we know that God's love, God cares for us. So even though, even though we're having the worst of day, even though Joe and Flo, they might have had the worst of day, knowing they had Jesus Christ in their heart, that goes and that lifts them up. And, we, and so we need to make sure we are like, Joe and Flo, who know the Lord is our Savior, and if you know someone like Joe, you need to be like Flo to invite someone like Joe. So we just kind of try to go and remember as far as that, there's, God, there's someone out there, there's a Joe out there that God wants us to go and invite. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord, and I do, Lord, just thank you, Lord, just for the opportunity that we have to go and to be a vessel for you that you go and you give us the opportunity to be able to go and share, share you 
with, with others, those that are family, those that we work with, those that we go to school with, Lord. You give us the opportunity to be used by you by inviting, by, by inviting them to your house, by telling them about you. And I pray, Lord, just to be with us, be to get, put someone in our lives this week that we can share you with. I pray, Lord, just be with us as we go into the kids' quest now, the Lord, just go and just uh, be with our time, be with the, the time, be with Pastor as he goes and preaches your word here. We ask things in the most precious name. Amen. Joe and Flo. All right. Uh, will you grab your Bibles today? And, and uh, I want to start. I want to start in 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14. Some of you probably don't even need to turn there because you know automatically that this is one of the great revival passages in the scriptures that we have. And since our theme over the next few weeks is going to be revival and we are going to actually have a revival meeting at the end of the month, um, our, our focus now for the next few weeks and before and even after the revival is going to be on the need for revival calling it revival fires because uh, for so many years there was the fire of revival that was the idea and um, and as i shared with you to begin the service this morning um i need i need a spark myself i need i need some of that flame myself i need uh I need what only God can, can give me. Because if you're anything like me, you burn the candle at both ends anyway, don't you? Are you familiar with that saying? My mom used to tell me that all the time. She used to say, Daniel, you need to get in bed early tonight because you've been uh, burning the candle at both ends. And that was very true because I was always very busy as a youngster and as a teenager and and uh, always had a lot going on even as an adult i can't remember very many days or weeks or months that have gone by that i haven't had just a hundred miles an hour of my hair on fire you know kind of kind of mentality with life and so i operate way too much in that manner and i do so on my own strength way too much and i find out very quickly that i can't do it on my own strength that i need i need the lord i need his power i need his passion i need his work through me in order to give me the proper strength and the proper passion that i need the proper vision that i need the proper manner in which to live all these things are very tough they are and and i i i gotta i'm just heavy today heavy hearted heavy with with not guilt necessarily but just heavy with the idea that i haven't been nearly as revived as i should be and you know revival starts with the assumption of something revival actually starts with the assumption the assumption that you've been vived before you, you see what i'm saying all right Okay, now you're going to have to help me here. I, I'm, just, I'm just being really, really transparent with you this morning. I'm struggling hard. I'm already sweating. And it's not because I'm in a three-piece suit. I'm struggling. You're going to have to help me. Revival starts with the assumption 
that we've been vived before. Isn't that right? Okay. So we can't be revived unless we have been vived. Or, in some of more familiar terms that we would use, can't be revived unless you've been saved. Okay? You can't be revived unless you've truly been born again. And I know that we go through periods of time where we have just been so down and so out for various reasons that we have got to have revival. And if we don't get it, then we're just going to keep on sinking lower and lower and farther and farther and deeper and deeper into the pit that we've already started. So in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, we'll get to this passage as a revival passage maybe next week, maybe in the, week that fo- in the weeks that follow. But I wanted to start out by showing you the fact that what I'm saying is the truth. The Bible says in this great revival passage, if my people, okay, there is an automatic thought there that this is God's people, right? If my people, it's not if the devil's people, if the enemy's folks, it's if my people is where 2 Chronicles 7, 14 starts, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. If my people, which are called by my name. Do you know what the ironic thing is with 2 Chronicles 7, 14? The ironic thing is when God speaks this to King Solomon and to Israel, it was at the dedication of the temple. Solomon had spent seven years building this this massive place to honor and a place of worship for God's people. And this was the dedication. This was the pinnacle of how close they should have been to God. And yet God, in the midst of this, is giving them a passage that's going to teach them what to do when they fall away. So really, it's not an if, but it's a when we will need to be revived. Because I guess God knows that, that, man, we are just weak and frail, and, and we get tired, and we get wrapped up in the world, and we get wrapped up in sin, and it's so easy for us to fall away from God. And it's so easy for us to need to be revived. Broadway Baptist Church, we need revival. We need revival badly. We are in a place, thank the Lord, that God has brought us to that is, that is just, just good. But guys, we're not great like we could be and should be. I don't want us to be just good. Do you? Come on now. Do you want to be just good? Just good enough? Just, just good enough to get by? Just good enough to pay the bills? Just good enough to keep all the staff fat and happy? And just good enough to keep everybody, all everything ticking and running and the air conditioners running and all the different things? We just want enough to get by. Do you just want to live like that? In the Lord? In the Lord's church? I want great. I want great from me. I want great from you. I want great from this city. I want great things because I believe that's what Jesus promised his disciples. When he left them, he said, Greater works shall you do than I ever did. I want to see great. 
And I know the only way that we're going to see great is for us to experience revival. We need some resuscitation in our lives. We need, we need some refreshment in our lives. A few years ago, I had a, I had a spot come up on my face. And I am a, I'm outdoors a lot. You know that. I, I love to play golf, like to fish when I can, that sort of thing. But I like to be outside. I don't like to be in the office a whole lot. I'm in the office when I need to be and that sort of thing. But, but I just like to be out. I like to be out and about. I like to be where people are. And so because of all of the sun that I've experienced in my life, I got this kind of brown spot that came up on my cheek right here. Well, I didn't think a whole lot about it because just about everybody that I've ever been around in my whole life that I was really close to kind of had age spots on them. So I thought, well, you know what, I'm getting close to 50 and, and uh, I'm supposing that it's probably just one of those age spots. Well, my beloved wife decides that something needs to be seen about this little spot on my face. And it's not bumpy, it's not raw, it's not itchy, it's not anything. It's just one of those brown age spots. That's all it is. I know that. But my wife thinks I need to go see the dermatologist. So, after canceling the appointment a couple of times and her remaking it a couple of times, and, you know, can't go here, can't go there, can't go, well, when you can you go? Well, okay, I finally went. Okay, and I went to the dermatologist, and I'm sitting there in the back room, and the guy comes in, and he looks at the spot, and he says, he said, all right, I see what that is. And he goes, it's, you know, 90 whatever percent chance that it's just a something, something, something. You know, and I said, well, is that cancerous? And he goes, oh, no, 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 it's not cancerous. He said, but it is something that, that you know, we kind of need to watch. And I said, I said, I'm feeling pretty good about this appointment all of a sudden. By the way, I haven't told you this, but I am a wimp. Especially when it comes to doctors. I, I don't like going to doctors. I just, I just don't. And so, so I'm sitting there, and, and by this time, I'm getting a little bit of confidence. This visit's going better than I thought it would. Everything's going to be okay. And I said, I said, by the way, I got this little spot up here on the top of my ear, too, that you, you know, I said, it just kind of popped up the other day, and, you know, I'm outside a lot and all this kind of stuff. And, and uh, he looked at that, and he goes, well, both of them are kind of, kind of about the same thing. Neither one of them skin cancer or anything like that. It's not something to, to really be, be concerned about it, but we'll kind of be aware of it and monitor it. And, he, and then the next thing I know, he goes, I think we probably should just go ahead and take that off today and he started getting this this tool out it just kind of miraculously appeared and it caught me by total surprise and so i felt immediately a cold sweat break out and the second thing i felt was my voice go up about three octaves like no, I don't believe we need to do that today. I think I'm going to be all right. I, really, we need to do this today? I mean, I'm talking about, and he's already firing up. It's a freeze type deal that they freeze this spot off of your face with. And he's getting that thing off, and I'm going, ah! I'm telling you, I'm just like, what is going on? And that before I know it, he's got this thing right next to my eyeball. And he's burning this spot off of my face. And I'm, I'm going, I'm like, I'm going to pass out. And then he goes, hold still just one more second. It'll just take a second. He just froze, and he froze us up. And he goes, and how I remember this is only by the grace of God. I, I don't know how I remember it. Because at that point in time, I'm pretty sure I passed out. But he said, he said, this is going to scab over, and he goes, don't pick at it or anything. The scab will just fall off in a few days, and, and it'll be just good as new. Now, if it comes back within a year or so, then, then you know, we'd probably want to do a little bit more to it. But he said, I really don't think it will, and everything will be all right. So a little scab here and a little scab here. Well, by the time I got down off the little stretcher thing, you know, that they have in the, in the doctor's office, that little thing that, you know, you can, that comes out from the end and stuff. Uh, first of all, I was thinking I had to lay down and take a nap right there for a second. But uh, um, I get up and my knees are wobbly. <laughs> and I get up and, and he goes, just, you know, got to check in with the receptionist out. So I, I'm literally walking and, and I'm, I'm like got tunnels in my eyes because of what has just happened to me unexpectedly. And I get to the recess, I, I don't even know what I signed. 
I, they just said, you know, whatever, appointment in another year or whatever it was. I said, yeah, right, signed it and, uh, and, and moved on out to my car. And I got out in my car. I was like, I don't know if I can. I, I started it up and I got out on Antley and I turned left like I was going to go back to Coleman. And I saw a subway right there on the kind of the corner right there. And I just pulled into the subway parking lot and I just parked the car right there for a second, turned the air conditioner on high, and just put my face in front of the air conditioner for a few minutes. And then I laid the seat back for a while because I needed some resuscitation from my dramatic visit to the dermatologist. I needed some revival. Go ahead and laugh out loud because I am a total wimp when it comes to the doctor i got home and told kim that story and she goes i've had three kids i said i know i know i know i'm a wimp but i needed some time i needed a revival i needed to get my focus back so i could drive forward today that's what we need we need to get our focus back so we can move forward where God wants us to be, where God wants to take us. Because I believe, I believe He wants to take us farther than we'd ever think we, we could go. To do greater things in and through us than we ever thought possible. I wonder... Have the circumstances of our world today caused us to feel, as I felt that day, like I was about to faint? Have the circumstances of our world just caused us to feel like we're about to faint? Has the unexpected of the world that we live in today absolutely and completely overwhelmed us? Or let me just ask you this, have you just completely lost your way and found yourself searching for a way back to fellowship with God? Are you lost today and just need to find your way back? I want to turn to a great revival passage. We will come back to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. But I want us to go to Psalm 85. Psalm 85, and we'll begin right at the beginning in verse 1. Psalm 85. Psalm 85 is not directly credited to David, but actually could have been written by David, or it could have been written at various times throughout the early to later history of Old Testament Israel. But we do know this, that it was written at a time when the people had gotten their focus off of God. And so here's what the psalmist writes in Psalm 85, 1. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Selah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt not, or will thou not revive us again? 
that thy people may rejoice in thee. You see, I see a few things just, just kind of pop out at me immediately as I look at these verses of Scripture. When I see, first of all, this is a, a prayer. It's a, it's a, it's a hope. It's a, it's a plea from the psalmist, the writer, to the Lord. Because verse 1 says, Lord, thou hast been favorable but i see in verses one through three some, uh, uh, something that happens over and over and over again lord thou hast then in the middle of that verse thou hast verse two thou hast verse three begins with thou hast okay there is a there is a a remembering that's going on. God, these are the things that you have done. There is then the idea that we have to have, if we're going to be revived, if we're going to see revival, that our focus must return to God. Our focus must return to God. That's where the psalmist's focus went back to. Thou hast, God, you have, you have, you have, you have. He says, Lord, you have been favorable unto thy land. Is that not true today? That God has shown us favor. Do we deserve it? Good heavens, no, we don't deserve it. But God has been favorable. And verse 1 continues, thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Do you know anytime you see the name Jacob in the Old Testament, it's a lot like when Jesus referred to Peter as Simon. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when we talked about that? That, that Simon, his old self, reared its ugly head again. Anytime you see in the Old Testament, the, ref the reference to Jacob rather than Israel, Jacob is the former man. Jacob is the one who was the heel grabber, one who was in it for himself, one who was totally and completely self-indulged. Israel was the man who was completely transformed. Israel was the man who was called and chosen and approved by God and so we see that there's something going on here God Lord thou hast been favorable to your land thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob thou you God have forgiven the iniquity of thy people you have covered their sins you've taken away all your wrath verse 3 says and you've turned yourself from the fierceness of your anger now there could be a couple of reasons one in particular why we really need revival and the main reason is always because we have drifted away from god we have found ourselves not nearly as close to God as what we once were. And when we drift away from God, it is our natural tendency to get ourselves involved in something that distracts us from God. Sin, busyness, not nearly as focused as we need to be on our relationship with God. And for that reason, we need to turn our focus back to God. And that's what the psalmist does in those three verses. Thou hast, thou hast, thou hast. I am recognizing, God, that you have done all these things. The 
the first verse highlights what God has done to even allow this passage to be written. God, you've been favorable to thy land. The fact that our church is even sitting here for us to have church in today and us to be able to have this message today, have the singing today, have the fellowship today, it's all happened because God has shown his favor toward us in some way. So if that's the case, shouldn't we turn our complete and total attention toward him? The second verse gives us much to ponder about the forgiveness of God. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered their sin. Our focus, you see, must re return to God. This is something that God has done. God has graciously looked down and done a work in His You know, kind of always like to consult various people and places and things like that. But my initial thought about this psalm was this psalm could have been written at the end of the Babylonian captivity when in the time of Cyrus the Great, the children of Israel were allowed to go back to Jerusalem and first of all rebuild the temple under Ezra and ultimately rebuild the city of Israel, or excuse me, Jerusalem, under the leadership of Nehemiah. And if you read this passage of Scripture with that particular context in mind, it fits. Now, whether it was written then or not, it fits. And it leads me to think this, that if it fits in that time, just as well as it could have fit back in the days of the judges, when they were on such a roller coaster ride, they were close to God here, and then whoo, they fell off the mountain, and then they were worshiping Baal. And then God put them into captivity, and they needed revival. And so he brought up a preacher. And a preacher comes in and starts preaching the truth to them. They all get right with God, they get revived. And they start serving God again, and God gives them some land back again. And God, they get on the mountaintop, and they stay on that mountaintop, usually for around 40 years. I don't know why 40 is the magic number. But at 40 more years, they serve the Lord, serve the Lord, everything's good. And then that leader dies. And <whistles> down the bottom of the roller coaster they go again, serving Baal again. This passage of Scripture shows that this is a time where the goodness of God has been shown to His people. Thou hast, thou hast, thou hast. Our focus, our focus needs to return to God so that, according to verse 4, turn us, O God, of our salvation and cause thine anger toward us to cease if our focus returns to god then we are able to follow the path to repentance follow down the path of repentance verse 4 gives a re, an individual responsibility you see that turn us that would be like, turn me, O God, of my salvation. Cause thine anger toward me to cease. Lord willing, in one of the many facets and phases of, of these messages over the next few weeks is we want to talk about reasons why we need to be revived. And one of those reasons is because we have fallen way too far away from the lord into sin but but uh, for right now let's just know that if we've gone there we need to follow back to the path of repentance and an individual responsibility is assumed here 
the turn means in verse 4 at the very beginning. Turn us. That word turn means to retreat back to the place where you were before. To retreat back. How many of us have gone way too far out of God's will and it's time to turn back and get back into God's will? To retreat back. So each of us who have known the grace, the mercy, the goodness, the peace, the comfort that comes that we can remember that we can retreat back to that safe place guys do you know that the actual word retreat is not just a verb but it can be a noun you can find your place of retreat in him we can find our solace our our grace our help our need to be embraced by God in that retreat that's why we need to follow the path to repentance this plea comes from the standpoint I believe of helplessness where we know we are helpless we can't revive ourselves and our candle is quickly burning to its close till we realize that we're not going to have revival there's a point of helplessness here so we actually come to the end of ourselves much like the prodigal son did. Guys, the message today, if nothing else, don't end up in the pig pen before you figure out your need for repentance. Maybe you're already there and you need to be washed and cleaned from being in the pig pen. But the prodigal son, he had to go all the way there before the Bible says he came to himself. And he realized, then he retreated. He went back to the place of grace, mercy, help, peace, comfort, hope. We come to the end of ourselves, we realize that God has to do this work in us completely. And then finally, in verses 5 and 6, Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Two great questions followed up by one more great question. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Verse 5, these questions wrap up the, my idea of we need to find out what God might do. We need to find out what God might do. Okay, because these are open-ended questions, aren't they? Verse 5, wilt thou be angry with us forever? It's an open-ended question. How do we beat back the anger of God? How do we beat back God? How do we beat that back? Asking Him to forgive us by coming to Him, by doing away with self and selfish ambitions and turning our complete and total attention to God um, do you know why of God and got it on bail or any other things any other idols which is what we will do too 
Anytime the focus got off, God removed His reserved. Could that be us today? Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Or wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice? Psalmist's voice here. It's an open ended question. There is still great humility. I believe there is still great hope. But there is the realization that if God does not answer this prayer for revival fires, nobody else can. All I'm seeking today with the opening up these messages is a spark. That's all I want. is just a little spark. That's it. Just a spark. Are you willing today to at least let the thought of revival in your heart and in my heart spark? Will you bow your heads, close your eyes? And let's stand together today as the instrumentalists come. I'm wondering, are you that desperate for God today that you would just let revival spark? Have you found yourself in a place where you are just faking it? And is the reality of your walk with God that it is weak and in dire need of resuscitation? Today we need to find that spark because that spark can begin to create a flame. But it begins with this invitation right now. Are we going to get back focused on God? Are we going to follow the path to forgiveness in order to find out what God might do? Are we? God, I pray that we would. I pray that we would find just a spark today. And then, Lord, as, as you spark within us, that we would move. And our movement today would be to the altar place, I believe, where all revivals begin. And I know we need it. And I know that our city needs it. I know our state needs it. I know our nation needs it today. We need revival. I'm asking you, Lord, to give us a spark today. And I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to speak right now in the lives of each and every one of us as we stand here today. And I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to prompt us to action, to prompt us to the altar, to our knees before you. God, take this invitation right now. I humbly give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all all to Jesus I surrender 
wonder humbly at his feet i bow worldly pleasure all forsaken take me jesus take me now i surrender all i surrender all all to thee my blessed savior i surrender Savior, holy thine, may thy Holy Spirit fill me, may I know thy power divine, I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee. to Jesus I surrender Lord I give myself to thee fill me with thy love and power let thy blessings fall on me I surrender all I surrender Thank you. You may be seated for just a moment. Uh, let me give you a couple of things uh, before we dismiss this morning. Um, Wings is tomorrow night. Uh, ladies, this is the monthly um, ladies' ministry, Women in God's Service. It starts at 6.30. Always a great time. Just bring a finger food, bring a friend, get ready for a great devotion and, and uh, time of fellowship. It's always, always a good time. Ladies, tomorrow night at 6.30. Um, birthday buddies is not this Thursday, but next Thursday as uh, we walk across to SIS and, and uh, treat the kiddos over there to birthday cake that uh, have had their birthdays in September. Always a great time. And then as we've been talking about, revival meeting coming up September 27th through the 30th. I know you've already got it on your calendar. Now I'm just going to ask you to begin to or continue to, if you haven't started already, pray toward revival. Our focus over the next few Sundays is going to be revival, as we've told you this morning already. And so uh, when Brother Kent gets here, that we just, uh, we just keep, keep throwing more logs on the fire. That's uh, the hope, that's the prayer. Um, and uh, then Fields of Faith for our youth ministry, Cultivate Youth Ministry, will be at Fields of Faith on October the 7th. That'll be here at the Mustang Bowl. If you need more information about that, just see Andrew or Hannah. And uh, also then, one more, just, just two more things. They're in the bulletin, but uh, just a little ways out, a ministry fair. I'm going to be talking to you more about that. Uh, it's just going to be an opportunity for you to see the ministries that are going on, ministries that we will need to refurbish and replenish, and also maybe some ministries that we need to begin here in our church over the next uh, little while. But the ministry fair will be all about that. There'll be uh, a fellowship surrounding that, and so it'll be some good time as well. And we are, um, we are already talking hastily about Treatsville and uh, just how we're going to be able to do that and uh, safely accomplish Treatsville and, and things. So uh, more information will be available we do know this one thing one way or another we will still have the trunk or treat portion and so candy barrels you'll start seeing those next sunday okay because it's right at a month away from treatsville uh next sunday so you'll start seeing those out next week okay um 
<clears throat> I don't uh, I don't do this very often. But man, I am I am having a hard time. You probably have noticed that over the last couple of weeks. Um, there's, there's just a lot going on in, in our mind, in my, my mind, our family. And, um, uh, and I, I'm, really, uh, I'm really struggling with it. And uh, all I know to do is to stay close to the Lord, which, which I am attempting to do on a daily basis. But I also know that I am thankful to say that I have a church family that loves me. And I'm just asking you to pray for us right now. Um, can't really divulge a whole lot of information, but, uh, but we're just kind of having a hard time. It's, uh, it's not anything marital <laughs> or anything like that. Um, don't, don't get that kind of idea in your mind, but I, it's just, just a struggle right now. And, um, and I would appreciate you praying for me praying for us and uh, I just thank you let's stand together and let's be dismissed this morning with a word of prayer Andrew will you will you do that for us please